Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> it's great to have all of you with us as we gather as God's people to share in the gifts of grace that are given to us by a good and wondrous God. Good to have all of you with us this evening. Uh, some things I need to share with you. First of all, <clears throat> you probably noticed Lynette hanging up here as well. Uh, Lynette Ender will be sharing the message with us this evening. A word of explanation, Lynette is a student in our Synod's School of Theology, which uh, involves about two to three years of, of a variety of classes covering Bible and theology and uh, ministry skills and uh, history and a whole bunch of other things. And Lynette has been a student in that school for, what about, two years? Two years, even through the pandemic. So she has been uh, working through that. Now, I need to say something. The fact that Lynette is doing a sermon and is in the School of Theology does not mean that if you go to the School of Theology, you are destined to preach. You could, but you don't have to. Because the neat thing about the School of Theology is you take the classes you want to take. And uh, so if you're really interested in Gospels, there is a Gospels class being taught this fall by Pastor Mark Qualley from English Lutheran. And if you're interested in, you know, what is our church about, uh, Bishop Malpica and assistant to the Bishop, Diane Stepanek, are going to team teach a course uh, kind of loosely called the ELCA Experience. What are we as a church and how do we relate to others? Those classes will be in September over the course of six Thursday evenings. So, Watch the newsletter, we'll put details in about that as time goes on. But, uh, or you can talk to Lynette, and she can tell you all about it, except she cannot tell you about those two classes because she hasn't taken them yet, right? But she can tell you about lots of other classes, so check that out. A couple other things. Um, please, please continue to send in cookbook recipes. We have a minimum number we need, and we're getting close to that minimum number, but we want to go over. So, uh, you know, if you have a great recipe, or if you've got a neighbor, maybe you've got a neighbor who has a recipe for barbecued ribs to just, they just it's a killer recipe, or, or it's just apple pie to die for, or something like that, please get that in and get the story into. We're really intrigued with the story as to why is this such a great recipe? Maybe it was grandma's recipe, maybe it's something you had every 4th of July, maybe whatever. Um, the stories are really an important part of that. Um, I'm looking ahead to two weeks from tonight. Uh, I will not be here. We do not have a communion assistant yet, so if you would be willing to be the communion assistant two weeks from tonight, please let me know. We need to find somebody for that. Um, and then finally, in our prayers, we want to keep continue to keep the family of Kathy Iverson in our prayers. Kathy died several weeks ago, but her funeral was held graveside at in Viroqua this morning. So we want to continue to keep Marvin and um, his family in our prayers as they grieve her loss. Our worship begins with confession and forgiveness. As you are comfortable, would you please rise? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. We continue with singing, Dearest Jesus, at your word. Thank you. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ, and you make yourself our guest. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your word above all else, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is a reading from the 18th chapter of the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quick, quickly three measures of choice flour kneaded and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf tender and good and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife, Sarah? He said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. The word of the Lord. expect so many of you. I heard we were having guests, but I didn't think Jesus was going to bring quite so many. And oh, Jesus is here too. Oh, well, see, my name is Martha, and I have a sister Mary, and I don't know where she is. I sure could use some help, since so many of you are here. And Jesus is here too. Peace and joy to you from God, our Father and our Lord and Savior, who came to us in flesh as a baby, and whose life, death, and resurrection is shared with us in the Gospels. The Gospel today is according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now as they went on their way, the disciples, he entered a, and Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by so many tasks, so she came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all of this work by myself? Tell her then to help me. The Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the early Christian church, hospitality was very important. Travelers survived because of hospitality. People travel through the countryside depending upon those living along the way to provide food, lodging, and news of the area. Jesus and his followers were on their way to Jerusalem. Along the way, Jesus was performing miracles and teaching the word of God. 
Well, as a child growing up in a farming community, my little Methodist country church provided the stopping place for news each week, hospitality and education. I met lots of women like Martha. I don't know that I recall meeting any Marys, but the women, um, women named Ramona and Dolores and Iva and Millie all scurried around the church kitchen serving funeral lunches, preparing our annual chicken supper so that we'd have enough money to keep the furnace running during the winter. As a child, I took great pride in coming in from the tobacco fields and showing my grandmother how dirty my hands were, the signs of what a diligent worker I was. I took on the role of Martha without even knowing the Bible story. The first time I really heard Mary and Martha's story, I was in a Bible study for young mothers. A group gathered twice a month for Bible study. The meeting morphed, though, into treats being brought for coffee and then full lunches, then followed by being assigned to provide a fresh meal delivered to all with a new baby in our church family. Noticing that one of our members stopped attending, I asked her about her absence. She stated, I want a Bible study to learn the Word of God, but each time I attend, I'm asked to do another task. I only have so much time to give. Well, weren't good works the sure way to heaven? Hmm. What was I missing? And what did Jesus mean when he said, Martha, there's only need for that one thing? Well, what is that one thing? As time went on, my Martha personality kicked into high gear. Ludafist supper, Sunday school teaching, confirmation guiding, social committee, church council filled much of my time. At home one day, as I scurried about feeling more frustrated by my husband watching television, I, Eric commented, you know, Lynette, not everybody needs to be busy all the time. Hmm, well, maybe I was missing something. What did Jesus mean when he said, Martha, there's only need for one thing? Well, what is that one thing? As we look to the text, we see that Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet, soaking up his word. During this time in history, women didn't assume the role of student. Traditionally, men took the role of student. Martha voices her frustration. I visualize a hand on her hip with an annoyed look at Mary, expecting Jesus to send her off to the kitchen. Instead, Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by so many things. There is the only need for one thing. Well, what's that one thing? I'm feeling like Martha's getting kind of a bad rap in this text. Jesus is scolding her for being a worker bee. What might happen without Martha, the Marthas in the Christian church? Maybe Jesus and his followers would have starved to death on their journey. Therefore, no resurrection, no eternal life. Certainly there would be no coffee and treats between Lutheran church services. The confirmation students would be hungry on Wednesday evening and who would help with the mailings every month? Well, when the pandemic swept the United States in March of 2020, many of my respons Martha responsibilities came to a halt. No in-person worship, no coffee hour to tend to, no Lutefis supper to organize and supervise. Wednesday confirmation became virtual. No supper for the kids needed preparing. Hmm, so what's a Martha to do? Hmm, well, this Martha turned to the Synod School of Theology during the pandemic. Having always wanted to learn more about theology, timing just never seemed quite right until now. Zoom classes sent me to the family room computer each Thursday evening. I soak up doctrine, Bible stories, ethics, Christian care of people, and even a class in preaching. The more I learn, the more I want to know. Well, maybe was, this Mary was onto something, but what was that one thing? As we live our lives that are quick, distracted and busy with daily tasks, what have we missed? A friend's cry for help, a spouse's need for a reassurance, a co-worker's need for guidance, 
or a grandchild's first words. As I ponder the roles of, that Mary and Martha play in this story, I'm very sure that we desperately need both Mary's and Martha's in our world. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, Jesus never tells us what that one thing is. He leaves us to ponder that for himself, ourselves. Maybe that one thing is that Jesus is giving Martha a foreshadow of the Easter people his followers will become after his death and resurrection. Easter people given hope for the future and promise of eternal life without first having to make sure that the meal is perfect and the house is clean. This eternal life is an amazing gift and a gift that Jesus doesn't want the Marthas of this world to miss out on. As you are comfortable, would you please rise and join in singing, I want to walk as a child of the light. Would you please join me in our profession of faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the Church, the creation, and all in need. Hear our prayer. Dear Christ, you are 
Christ, who created all things, visible and invisible, teach humankind to honor and protect all creation, including living things that remain hidden from our eyes, such as air, atmosphere, molecules, and microscopic creatures. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ, who reconcile all things, motivate those in power to end enslavement, dehumanization, or brutality of any kind, and to protect and improve the lives of indigenous peoples. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ, we bring peace. For sure, all who are worried and distracted by many things in your constant presence. Soothe those suffering in mind, body, or spirit. <clears throat> Sustain all who are afflicted and those who serve as caregivers. God of grace, Amen. hear our prayer. In Christ, you make your word fully known. Inspire this worshiping community to abide fully in your word as we sit at the feet of Jesus. Bless the ministry of teachers and Bible study leaders. God of grace, Amen. hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray this day for Marv and his family as they grieve the loss of Kathy. Continue to hold them in your tender care and allow them to grieve filled with hope, a hope of life eternal that comes through your gift in the crucified and risen Jesus. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Would you please join me in the prayer our Lord taught us to pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. As you receive the sacrament, please note that uh, we have gluten-free wafers. <clears throat> if you have need of those, please indicate that to us. And we also have grape juice along with the wine. If you prefer the grape juice, again, please let us know. Uh, for those of you who are visiting with us, please note the communion invitation in the bulletin. We do sincerely invite you to join with us. Come, for all is ready. You may be seated. As you are comfortable, would you please rise and would you pray with me? Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The God of peace. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. We continue with singing, This is My Father's Word. Thank you. 
Go in peace. Love your neighbor. 